else I hear? I am going to make another height ruler. Since grandchild number four is now standing and walking, it's time to start measuring. So I have this nice big piece of pine here and I'm gonna do it differently this time. Before, when I made these, I burned all the, the numbers and all the markings, but I'm gonna use my router this time and see how routering does. I'm really excited about that. So now I am going to go through and I'm gonna mark everything. And I actually made one of these rulers and marked it wrong and sent it to somebody. And it's a friend of mine and he didn't say anything. A long time later, I was looking at a picture of it and I could see right away that I had messed up on the, the numbering. And so I called him and said, hey, you know, the number is wrong. Why didn't you say anything? He's like, oh, I, I don't know what he said, but he was really nice. And anyway, I felt like a dork. <laughs> so I want to make sure that I get that measuring right this time. It's going to be mounted six inches off the floor. So that means at six inches, I start to mark things. So at 12, that's one foot. And then 24 is two feet. 36, three feet. I made all of the foot markings three inches long. Then I added the numbers and I should have turned the ruler around at this point and added the numbers facing the other direction, but I didn't think of it until later. So the numbers are going backwards rather than forwards, but it still works. Then I added marks every half of an inch and the half inch marks were half an inch long and the inch marks were an inch long and the half foot mark was two inches long. Then I started routering, doing the outer edge of the numbers first. When I started on the lines, I used a speed square to guide the router and that worked pretty well. I didn't know that Wally was resting under the table until I started working on the video. Then I cleaned out the inside of the numbers using a straight edge router bit. And used a sanding sponge to sand all the fuzzies away. The sponge sinks nicely into the grooves and it made removing them all quick and easy. Then I thought about sanding sealer. Since this is pine, the paint has a potential to bleed, so I decided to go ahead and put some sanding sealer on it. When that was dry, I taped over the knots in the wood that I didn't want paint to enter, and when that was all ready, I sprayed the routed areas with black primer. And when that was dry, I removed the tape and sanded it with 80 grit. I was afraid to use anything grittier than 80 on the pine, but 80 took it off nicely and didn't scratch it too much. My idea was to have a bunch of characters in silhouettes and a few in black and white that I could color with a Sharpie since I don't have watercolors handy. And I had used watercolors before when I did some of these rulers. I was going to use the lacquer thinner transfer technique, but I couldn't get it to transfer nicely. So I sanded that off and went to my trusty wood burner and that worked well. But 
coloring with the Sharpies didn't work well, and it did bleed even with the sanding sealer. So I sanded that off and I had another idea. Well, I just went and printed off a bunch of colored pictures because I just put one on that was colored and it looks so awesome. Right there. So I'm going to keep some of the black and whites that I put on and then I'm going to replace some with color. And it's pretty easy just to sand them off. So I ended up sanding most of them off and started transferring the colored ones. Cool. Yeah, neat. Okay, let's keep adding them like that. The characters I chose were from Winnie the Pooh and Looney Tunes, but I also added an occasional penguin and buffalo. Here's the gang, Eeyore, Tigger with Taz, Mark Anthony with Piglet, Pooh with K-9, Pooh floating with a balloon, and then Pooh in color. Then we have Porky Pig, Peppy Le Pew and Penelope, Michigan J. Frog, Sylvester and Tweety and Granny, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner with a penguin, and Pooh and Piglet, my favorite Bugs Bunny, Witch Hazel and Yosemite Sam, Speedy Gonzalez, Daffy and Elmer Fudd, George P. Dog, Pooh and a Buffalo, Marvin the Martian, Henry Hawk and Foghorn Leghorn, and Cecil Turtle. Then some penguins, another buffalo, and my little house. Then I used carbon paper to transfer her name to the top of the ruler. Her name is Never, and we've come up with all sorts of nicknames. Nev, Nevi, Nevishka. It seems to suit her. I ended up changing the N because it didn't look quite right. Then I routered it, chiseled it, sanded it, sprayed it off, then painted it with acrylic paint. Then sanded the overflow. I used a giant Sharpie to blacken one edge. And here it is so far. Then I flipped it over and added a verse to the back. I added Psalm 139.16 and it says, All the days planned for me were written in your book before I was one day old. I thought that was a great verse to think about as you're growing up. It was fun to make it really big and flowy on the back there, and I put Love Grandma. I took it outside and used this polyurethane in a can and brushed it on the back. Let it dry for four hours or so, and then flipped it over and put it on the front. So on this project, I used polyurethane in a can, clear satin, and I usually use polyurethane in a spray can. And so there's differences I've discovered with these and reading the directions, of course. So this says to apply a thin coat and then within two hours, spray another coat. But it says if you're unable to do so, you have to wait 72 hours, then sand it and then recoat. So interesting, one coat and it will get bumpy, apparently, unless you within 72 hours, spray another coat, and then you can spray and spray and spray, and you never have to sand it in between coats. This one, however, you have to put a coat on, then you have to wait four to six hours, and then you have to lightly sand with 220, and then add another coat if you want, and do the same process, waiting four to six hours, and then sanding again and applying a coat. So this one, required to sand for you know, the best outcome. And this one, as long as you don't wait 72 hours between coats, you don't have to sand it. So strange. So after everything dried about four to six hours later, I sanded each side with 220 and it took the bumpies right off. Made it nice and smooth. There. Well, 
light roller's all done. And it goes up to six foot six, but you mount it six inches off the floor. So about six feet right there. <laughs> but Never's daddy is six foot five, so he can put his height on here too. So I really liked rubbering this versus wood burning it. It was a lot quicker. So thanks for joining me, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye!